To work with vector shapes in Autograph, we need to use the Shapes Generator. We can add a new layer using this generator via the plus button at the top of the timeline. Selecting this generator will display it in the Properties panel and show three options that we'll define a bit later. For now, just keep in mind that they define rendering rules. The area just below, which is currently empty, will gradually fill up as we add elements. The plus button at the top shows the different elements that can be added. If we delete this layer, we can recreate it using the tools on the left in the viewer. Clicking on the Shape Tool button will display various tools on the left in the vertical bar. Let's start by clicking on the top button, selecting Shape Fill Style, and drawing a shape by holding down the left mouse button to add points, move tangents, and then close the shape by clicking on the starting point. Now there are new elements in the Properties panel. First, there's a path group which contains the path that we just drew. By selecting this path group and drawing a new shape, a second path, path 2, will appear within the path group. So a path group is meant to contain multiple paths. So how can we determine how they'll be drawn? This is where styles comes in, such as the fill that appears here. We'll see that it's possible to add as many styles as we want, and these styles can be defined directly when creating a shape. Let's start by deleting the layer in the timeline. The menu at the top is where we can select from a variety of options, for example, to define a stroke style before creating the curve. This does two things. It creates a path group and the path inside of it, and it creates a stroke style that will draw the outline of the curve. Adding a second fill style will also be based on the content of the path group. So the Properties panel displays a list of operations that's read from top to bottom to determine the order. We start by defining a path in the path group, then we draw the path once with a fill, and then a second time with a stroke. Swapping the order of these styles allows us to draw the stroke first and then cover it with the fill. Keep in mind that the Properties panel displays a chronological list of operations from top to bottom. Let's delete this layer and go back to the menu at the top. As you can see, these two styles can also be created simultaneously. This button is part of a toolbar at the top of the viewer that allows you to adjust both the fill color and the stroke color, as well as its thickness. These settings will be applied when the next shape is drawn. Let's go back to the menu to double check that shape and stroke is selected and draw a path that'll be filled in red with a green outline. Always remember that we start by defining the paths, where we can, for example, add a second path within the path group, which is then drawn with a fill style and a stroke style that we can swap in the properties panel. This order is very important to remember. In this video, we went over how to use shape tools, create path groups containing multiple paths, and to find styles to draw shapes.